from counterfeits to excellent customer service experiences to amazement at the wide, vibrant array of colors to complete and utter disgust with the koala, with the koala, with the quality of the pencils. My journey with Prismacolor Premier colored pencils has been a roller coaster. I'm Greg, aka Vaccinic, and this is Prismacolor in 2022. Prismacolor Premier colored pencils come in 150 unique colors. This is the official color chart and is fairly accurate to what you can expect from the pencils. They are available in open stock from retailers like Blick at $1.36 per pencil. The sets range from various 12 count tins at $26.99 from Michaels or $14.59 from Blick up to a complete set of $150 for $200 at Michaels or $120 from Blick. It's a no brainer shop around. Of the 150 colors, 80 are rated light fast according to the 6901 standard, the same standard that Karen Dash uses for luminance and Derwent uses for their light fast lines. These are the swatches I made for the light fast colors. I have color graded them to be accurate. As you can see, more are LF1 than LF2. This means these colors will last decades without fading under museum-like conditions. Now, when new, this box will come wrapped in cellophane. I've been using them for about, I don't know, a uh, year and a half or so now. These in particular. And that's what the back looks like. They have a 3.8 millimeter wax based core. Color pencils are, all color pencils are oil and wax, but Prismacolor are biased wax. So they come in this box here. It's held shut by this. There's a magnet in there. It's got a clasp. You can see. I wouldn't trust it walking around with it, but it works on a desk. So you pop it open and you're presented with this here. All the pencils are in plastic trays that are flimsy. If you don't take them out right with both hands, you are going to lose your pencils. There are six of these trays holding all 150. And even though I am not a fan of the cardboard box, it does have one feature I really like. If you take it, you fold it under like this, and it puts them at an angle in front of you like that. I do like that. It's convenient. But um, yeah, that's about it for that. So this is what the pencil looks like. It's a fairly simple design, which I don't mind. Sometimes simple is better. As you can see, 3.8 millimeter wax core. Country of origin is stamped. You have the Prismacolor branding right there. You have the color name in English and French and the color number because they are open stock. You'll need that to reorder. They, however, do not have a capped end, which it's, I think it's debatable as to whether or not it actually protects the core. I can see how it could if it drops and hits like that. Um, that's going to take a direct shot. Now, this is what it looks like compared to a Pablo. A Pablo is a hex core. The thing I prefer about Prismas is the labeling. The labeling, no matter what, is always legible on these. On lighter pencils, it'll be black, and that, no matter the lighting, you don't get that crazy shine on it. You always know what you're picking up. These, however, because they are trying to be a little more fancy, the lighting, it 
the writing there is real small as far as the color name and number and light fast rating. They use blue wool for these. Depending on your lighting, you'll get a shine and these will be a little harder to read. They are capped, which is considered a boon for a lot of people. And if you look at them, it's they're about the same as far as the barrel thickness. I don't have my uh, calipers, so I can't check it. But the hex core doesn't make a difference as far as I'm concerned. Now, if you look at it, them compared to a higher tier pencil, the Derwent Lightfast and the Luminance, you can immediately see that these are some fat boys here. They are definitely a little thicker. They again capped ends on these because when you are trying to market a quality product, capped ends are great for that. Um, the thickness of these hasn't affected me any and the writing on these has not been a problem yet. Uh, the Karen Dash, uh, it's a little small. Again, they print it real small. Now the arch nemesis of Prisma here, uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos, is a thicker barrel. I'm not 100% sure if the core is thicker or not. It appears to be. It is a harder core, again, that has a capped end. And again, with the gold leaf, I'm not crazy about it, but it is a little larger and better spaced out than it is on the Pablo and the Luminance. Um, I'm just showing comparisons so you can see what's out there. I do believe it's important to have a... Uh, relatable baseline when you're talking about different products or one product in particular because nothing happens in a vacuum and the more you know the better information is king when it comes to buying stuff and in, is the most powerful tool you have as a consumer so yeah there you go there's the brands that you will commonly see talked about when it comes to artist grade pencils uh, these two, every color in their lines, the Luminance and Derwent Lightfast, are all Lightfast. 100% Lightfast. That's why you see that seal on there. 80 of these are Lightfast, according to the 6901 standard. As I said earlier, it is the same standard that this uses and that this uses. These two, same thing. Not every color in the line is Lightfast. I have not done a count on these yet because I don't do commissions, so it's not the most important thing to me. But these both use blue wool. It is a different standard than the rest of them. So they are not directly relatable. I'm not going to go too deep into light fastness. That is something that can be reserved for another video. What we care about is the quality of Prismacolor. Are they usable? Are they going to hold up to a beginner because that is the lens through which I am doing the rest of this video. These are my opinions based on my experiences with this brand. It is the brand I got back into art with and I am going to try to be as objective as possible throughout this portion of the video. I have contacted Prismacolor I was asking them about their QA standards because I want to give them a fair shake. And it seems as though they will be sending me a replacement 150 count set. If that happens, I will be doing a follow up video to this one. I will live stream it here on the channel. My plans are to open it and swatch it straight through with two cameras, one on the paper I'm swatching and showing the sharpening and another camera on the box so you know there is no funny business going on. I will update on my Twitter about what's going on with that and now let's get into the pros and cons of these pencils because they have been fairly polarizing for me. All right, I'm going to cover the problems I have with them first and then delve into the things this brand does exceptionally well. 
because there are a couple things I admire about them. But the cons first. Buying them. Yes, buying them. The first set I bought was counterfeit, as far as I could tell. Most have off, had off-center cores that were not 3.8 millimeter. They were smaller than regular Prismacolor. The barrels were painted differently. They were a different weight. And most importantly, the colors were off and laid down differently. Yes, this is not Prisma's fault, but you have to buy them. They don't just appear in your lap one day. So what's the solution? Do not buy them from third-party sellers unless you know they are reputable. Amazon and Walmart both offer products from third-party sellers. I made a video on this. It was focused primarily on Amazon because that was where I got them. I'll link it in the description. Oddly enough though, the counterfeits did not have one cracked barrel, which brings me to my next problem. The build quality, or lack thereof. So just a side note, the footage you're seeing here is me sharpening a known good pencil. And then I'm gonna run through some pencils that have off-center cores, some that I knew I had problems with, and other ones that I haven't even used yet. Just to demonstrate with these sharpeners, the uh, what you could possibly run into buying a set of these pencils. And it doesn't always matter whether you have the doll or you have the Prismacolor barrel. It's regardless of the sharpener, you can run into problems. I've tried a number of different ones. So uh, back to the review. It's as though they don't check the product off the line. It has been my main sticking point. It's just not there. So far across one 72 count set directly from Newell and one 150 count set purchased from Blick, I've had the same issues across all the pencils. I've had a ridiculous amount of barrels cracked right out of the box. And I've had more crack while sharpening. I'm not sure if it's the adhesive or not. Is it not strong enough? Maybe it's part of it, but a lot of the cores are off center as well. This leads me to believe the wood is not being cut evenly, which may lead to whatever routing is being done to create a groove for the core to rest in is off as well. Carpentry is one of those things where every small mistake makes the next mistake much more impactful. So perhaps the seam being off and the cut for the core being canted causes undue stress and weak points, thus causing the barrels to crack maybe the adhesive not to stick properly. I don't know what it is, but these pencils crack. I have not had any completely split apart, although I have a few that look like they might if I continue to sharpen them, but I have read about people having that problem, though I have not experienced it myself. And I believe this is the crux of the problems with sharpening these pencils. The quality of the manufacturing of the barrel is affecting the core. The points often break while sharpening. It's almost guaranteed if the core is off. And these are pencils I quickly picked out of the um, 72 count set that have off-center cores. And I mean, when I say quickly picked, that means at a glance. I wasn't even being picky about what I pulled. And these are the ones that are just egregiously off-center. I have used two different comb sharpeners, a Prismacolor barrel, and a Dahl 155. The combs and Prisma were breaking points, be it twisting the sharpener to sharpen them, or twisting the pencil to sharpen them. It did not matter. The points broke regardless. The Dahl, however, is an entirely different animal. This is the community recommended sharpener for these pencils. And though it works great with my other pencils, it has the same issues with Prismas. It also cracks barrels. It has flattened the entire side of the points before. I don't know how that happens. I don't know how a pencil does simply gets flattened out on one side. On top of this, 
because the barrels are a soft wood. The pencils can spin even with a good bite while sharpening. And those are the major problems that I have found with them. I have a few other small gripes that would be nitpicking at this point. Let's cover the pros now because the things these pencils do well, they do really well. And this one isn't so much the pencils as it is the customer service. I gotta give it to them. They are extremely responsive and eager to solve your problems. When I had the counterfeit set, which I didn't know they were at the time, and I emailed Newell about the quality of the pencils I was using, they immediately sent out a new set without question. They are possibly sending out a new set to replace the 150 count set I've been using for the review here. I didn't even email them about the set specifically. I just asked about their quality assurance department and what standards they operate by. I haven't gotten a reply back on that yet, but I may be getting a new set of pencils. Maybe these pencils will be good. They said they're coming directly from the warehouse off the line. So if this is the case, I'll be doing a review on a brand new set of Prismacolor. Will they redeem themselves? I don't know. We'll see. Customer service, despite the quality of the pencils, is top notch. And I don't know if it's just cheaper for them to send out a new set of pencils every time there's a problem, but I mean, you can't really argue with that. They're eager to help you. The color line is fantastic. They pop and stand out in an incredible way. All 150 are usable and cover a well thought out range of colors. No spectrum feels like it's lacking in colors. If you're not worried about commissions or fading over time, this set is all you're going to need to do what you got to do. You should be able to mix any color from it, though sometimes the 150 set feels a little overwhelming to me because I like to mix colors and a smaller set helps me think more critically about that and I get less into looking at well I could use this color or I could use that color or I could use this color I just go into mixing colors but you know to each their own that's a personal preference and this is perhaps the biggest boon for them they are easy to blend if you follow common practice for colored pencil blending you will not have any problems with them even though they don't telegraph their limits clearly, probably due to their waxy crown-like nature, which creates the smooth lay down that people love, I did pick it up quickly, and I do find the look they can create satisfying. There's nothing wrong with the way they blend, although you can't get as many layers out of them, but I love the way they blend, and I love the way they look when they're burnished. You can't argue with the color array or the way they look. It's mwah. It's fantastic. The most difficult part of this review for me was remaining objective. My initial experience being with a counterfeit set, leading to an amazing customer service experience that led to a set being sent directly from Prismacolor without question in 2020. That set leading to point breakage and noticing cracks in the barrels, thinking it was my sharpener initially. I bought another set, thinking perhaps I got a bad one. And with the 150 count set in 2021, having cracked barrels and continued point breakage across multiple sharpeners. Again, it was a coom cube, coom jar, a Prismacolor barrel, and a doll 155. These two sets both exhibited the same problems. And despite the amazing customer service, the vibrant array of colors, and the ease of blending, with the problems they have in regards to quality, I personally cannot recommend that anyone buys these. 
if Newell does indeed send me another 150 count set, I will absolutely go through it with a fine tooth comb. And if I find that the current production in 2022 is of a satisfactory quality, I will release an update video. But in the meantime, unless you can get them for about $70 from a reputable retailer, lest you risk a counterfeit set, I cannot recommend them. If you are a beginner with colored pencils, it can be an extremely frustrating experience. I nearly stopped using colored pencils because of these until I got the Karen Dash Pablos. So currently that is where I stand. And it is the nicest, most objective way I can say it is I do not recommend them for the money they ask. Not even the $120 that you can purchase them for at a Jerry's or a Blick. They're just not worth the money. I hope this review was insightful and helped you form an informed opinion. Because as I said before, as a consumer, information is the best tool you have at your disposal. And money is how you vote. You vote with your wallet. If it's not a quality product, you don't buy it. And hopefully the company wises up. Thanks for watching. I'm Greg, aka Vexcynic. Hit that sub button, like, dislike, leave a comment. Have a good one. I'm out.